I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm with, what's your name? Father Mac Hill. And where are you from? Florida, in the United States. First time here, Father? First time here. And how is the experience? Uh, it's been wonderful. I love uh, seeing the faith of all these people, especially when we have the big gatherings behind the church. Mm -hmm. Seeing, you know, five, six thousand people in adoration or praising God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, it's impossible not to be moved. Of course, Catholic Church alive, no, somehow. Yeah, exactly. And you have a favorite spot here in Medjugorje, you know? Uh, I mean, my favorite spot's always before the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. Any, wow. you know, the Adoration Chapel. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and specifically here, I, I loved uh, going up on Apparition Hill and finding a quiet place, you know, mm -hmm. kind of away from everybody. Mm -hmm. And what would you tell people? A lot of people here look for their vocation. What would you tell them out of your experience, out of your life? How did you find your vocation? What would you give us some advice to you? Yeah, I mean, to find your vocation, you just have to fall in love with Jesus and pursue Him and He'll tell you where He wants you to be. You know, sometimes people just want to ask the question, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? But mm -hmm. first you have to just know that you're loved by Jesus mm -hmm. and know who you are mm -hmm. in His eyes, know your identity, mm -hmm. you know, and your vocation, your calling flows from that. So yeah, you can ask the Lord, you should ask the Lord, hey, what should I do? What's your calling for my life? Mm -hmm. But you don't want to focus only on that question. You want to focus more on loving God and serving Him, and the Lord will put you where He wants you to go, you know? And if He wants you to be a priest, He'll start putting that on your heart. Hey, you should be a priest. If He wants you to get married, He'll start putting somebody in your life. Mm -hmm. And you know, I see people give advice, say you should be a priest. Should it be out of your heart? Or is it also from outside when people give you advices? Well, it's a little bit of both. I mean. First, it has to be from your heart. But if, if people over and over again keep mentioning, hey, you'd be a good priest or you'd be a good nun, mm -hmm. I mean, you should start to think about it. Okay, Lord, is this what you're calling me to do? People are seeing it in me. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it has to be that calling that you hear in your own heart. Nobody can hear the call for you. Exactly. And um, you, you had the devotion to the rosary all the time in your life? Or? Um, I mean, it, I had a... Uh, conversion experience where you know the faith really became real for me but uh fairly soon after that yeah i, I made a uh, consecration to jesus through mary and I, I didn't really know what i was doing but all the yeah all the holy people at church were doing it so i was like well they're doing it i should it's a good idea so i should do it too uh -huh. and i went through it not really knowing what i was doing but um it wasn't until two years after i made that consecration and started having more of a relationship with our lady that all of a sudden i looked back Two years ago when I made that consecration, all these things happened in my life. Things fell into place. More freedom. Mm -hmm. for, like there was a particular sin I kept struggling with. Go to confession, do it again. Mm -hmm. Go to confession, do it again, and go to confession. And at, two years later after this consecration, I'm looking back and I'm like, you know what, it was right when I consecrated myself to Jesus through Mary that I just never fell into that sin again. And it was soon after that that I like actually heard the call and was able to say yes to priesthood. Like I had been hearing it, but running away and wrestling God mm -hmm. and all of a sudden once I made this consecration to Our Lady it was like I had this freedom and a, a peace to be able to say yes. Where do they find, if people listen now they would want to do the same thing, where do they find this? How do they get to that consecration? Uh, there's different versions. Um, it's a the, fall? Yeah, the, con the consecration I did at first was the Louis de Montfort. Um, his is, because it's older, um, if it's brand new for you, it's kind of less accessible, right? You don't understand it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing a consecration the first time, there's a newer one. It's by Father Michael Gately. He's a priest in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and he makes it just very simple down to earth. So if somebody's doing it the first time, doesn't really know what they're getting into, I'd recommend the Michael Gately one. It's called 33 Days to Morning Glory. Wow, beautiful. And, um, what would you tell people? There are a lot of people out there, they maybe want to go to confession, they are scared. They say, what will the priest think of me if I tell him all the sugar stuff? You know, it, you're saying you had it, you repeat it over and over and then. What would you tell them? I'd say your sins really aren't interesting and mm -hmm. we don't remember them. Yeah. That's simple as that, huh? Uh, yeah, I've heard so many confessions and trust me, they all blend together, you know. You know um, okay. And the Lord really does give priest the grace to forget sins like after we hear them you know I just finished hearing about three hours of confessions I don't really remember anybody's sins 
I might remember in general, but if I looked at a specific person, I wouldn't say, oh, so-and-so did this. No, I'm never going to remember, you know. That's the devil playing tricks in your mind, no? Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So when you go to confession, just think of it as you're talking directly to Jesus and he happened to take the form of this priest in front of you. Mm -hmm. And may I ask you, you said like you had a specific conversion moment. What was it? What happened? Uh, I mean, it's kind of a longer story, but um, the shorter version, you know, I'd grown up Catholic, but always going through the motions because it's what mom and dad did. Um, and, you know, I was in college, I was partying all the time and chasing women and just basically living for myself, totally for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a moment, it, uh, I actually could have died. I got in a car accident. Uh, I was drinking, did not remember driving at all, mm -hmm. and I got arrested. I went to jail, and I'm sitting in a jail cell, and I'm like wondering, what am I doing with my life? Clearly, it's not going that well. I don't want to keep living like this. I'm totally empty inside. You know, I had been having fun and everything. I was just empty inside, right? It was like, I was like a, like a zombie, right? Walk, the Walking Dead, and. Um, yeah, so I had this moment, I said, basically, Lord, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to live for you, whatever that's supposed to look like. And I, I didn't imagine that'd be a priesthood or anything like that, but um, it began a whole process of conversion. I started praying daily, started, uh, I went to confession for the first time in a few years and like for the first time really meaning it mm -hmm. and being repentant. And I was just so filled with the, the love and mercy of God. It was like, you know, I, you hear all your life, hey, God loves you, God loves you, He's merciful, all this. But for me, that was the time where I actually, like, experienced it, mm -hmm. you know, and it became something real. And it started to pray every day, especially reading scripture. Every time I opened the Bible, I felt like God was speaking right to me. And it was just every single day, more and more coming to know, like, really, God loves me, and this is amazing. I don't want to live any other way. So. Wow. I believe it. it's uh, what Our Lady says, live from the heart, you prayed from the heart, you did the call. The confession from the heart real you did it yeah. really you know yeah. really that's what god wants the real deal no exactly Nothing yeah no between. mask or anything yeah and at the end what would you tell people why come to medjugorje one time i mean i think people have all different reasons for coming to medjugorje um i'd say don't come just because you're looking for signs and wonders and you heard oh people's rosaries turn to gold or people see the sun dancing and things like that i mean Come to Medjugorje for the same reason you would come to Mass on Sunday, because you want to encounter God, you know. And this place happens to be a very holy place and kind of a supercharged environment of faith because everybody who's coming here is looking for some experience of God. Um, but basically you just come because you have a hunger for the Lord, you know, and you want more of God. And that's a, a prayer that we should pray every day of our lives. Lord, I want more of you. Mm -hmm. And I see you have a personal re relationship with Christ. That's the center of our faith. How can you have that? What would you tell people? How to have this a peace, this joy you have. I yeah, how to have a relationship with Jesus. I mean, for me, it starts with prayer every single day. Yeah. Um, and it that doesn't uh, just fall out of the sky for you. Like that takes a decision, right? Our life is based on choices that we make. So, yes, Jesus is the one who calls us first, but we have to respond and say yes. Uh, so, how to have a relationship with Him is just. A daily yes and I tell everybody that that always starts with a daily yes to pray mm -hmm. making time to just be in silence with God mm -hmm. and obviously the like choices that we make loving the people around us are part of that you know but having that daily prayer it, it helps you just for the whole rest of the day to be aware and to look around and see the presence and the goodness of God and to be grateful and you know and can you give at the end a blessing for the people watching that video? Yeah, may the Lord bless whoever is watching this. May the Lord fill your hearts with His peace and His joy. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you.